So, I had some technical issues there. My apologies. Um, this will be the all, all systems go. Um, just had some technical issues there that made me cuss and therefore made this live video null and void. Um, so, we're gonna restart because, um, yeah. Can't have cussing here. Sorry, guys. Um, I know that you want to hear my truest, most authentic self, but sometimes my truest, most authentic self is um, kind of kind of raunchy, um, and I don't want you to hear me complain about technical issues. Um, but hello, all, um, and happy first show Friday, and thank you to each and every one that will tune in on this maiden voyage. Uh, my name is Alex Blackburn, host of The Burn Podcast and maiden writer for the Burn KC Sports Talk website. We talk KC Sports, make off-the-wall predictions, and just overall, have good times. So strap in, put your listening ears on, and, you know, just uh, relax and uh, feel the burn. Yeah, hashtag burn it down, brand placement. Yeah, right, yeah, all right. So let's just jump into it and uh, explain how this podcast and uh, website will work. Uh, website, daily posts every day. If you've been keeping up with it, you already know the drill. Um, weekly podcast and just... Um, weekly podcast is just going to kind of wrap up everything that's talked about on the website. Uh, podcast will run about half an hour to an hour at a time, maybe more, maybe less, depending on how hot the week was. Um, stories will be ranked on how hot the topic is, i.e. the burn notice, um, from 10 out of 10 to 1 out of 10. Um, and now that that kind of long-winded explanation is uh, out of the way, um, and, I mean, if you've been tuning in, you probably already know the drill. Um, gonna be a good sports talk today. There's a lot um to talk about this is kind of more meant to be an intro so it may be a bit on the shorter side um but there's still tough there's yeah still stuff to talk about excuse my um little motor mouth there it's going faster than my brain can think sometimes um but get it while it's hot and let's get into it uh, let's start with Sporting Kansas City. Sporting KC has gotten their season started, and thus far it has uh, not looked good after losing their first and a narrow 1-0 win against the Houston Dynamo. Sporting went on to Colorado just to get the beak, just to get the beaks, just to get the brakes beat off of them. Two nothing against a Colorado team. That looked pretty stellar. Um, it's quite early. Sporting 2 is in the process of developing future stars. And frankly, they've gotten beat, beaten up pretty bad this past free agency. And just injuries as well. Um, they were sellers rather than buyers this past free agency. Um, so the question is, should Sporting fans be worried? Um, my answer is, if you didn't... If you didn't expect a building year for this club, then you haven't been keeping a very good eye, frankly. Um, as previously stated, free agency is definitely a killer for the boy, the boys in blue and navy this year. Um, but not only that, you gotta remember they got gut punched in the playoffs this past year, um, losing in the Western Conference Finals to LA or excuse me, Salt Lake. Um, and losing a lot of those guys to free agency, the guys that maybe wanted to make it a revenge year um, if they had stayed, they're not here anymore. Uh, we've got an older roster, yes. Um, but overall, we're bringing in a lot of young talent to replace those that have been lost. Um, and it is a rebuilding year. So if you didn't expect that for Sporting Kansas City, then frankly speaking, again, you haven't been keeping a very good eye. Um, and the MLS doesn't relegate people. Let's relax. It, it, Sporting Kansas City is going to have bad years, just like every other Kansas City sports team. Um, 
when it comes to Kansas City sports, there's a lot of reactionary stuff. Um, I think the biggest example is the Chiefs, which we'll get into that later. Um, but frankly speaking, I think everyone just needs to relax and just chill when it comes to supporting Kansas City. Um, they're in a rebuilding year. They got a lot of really new guys and a lot of really old guys that will need replacing and a lot of injuries as well. And I trust in Peter Vermees. I don't think he's going to get fired. Um, after this year, I think that would be ridiculous on the part of Sporting Kansas City's front office. Um, I think they stick with the long-standing veteran and just trust the process. Um, not a whole lot going on in terms of Sporting Kansas City news, so let's just jump into the next topic that's got some fire going. Um, I would say the burn notice for Sporting KC is 3 out of 10, mild chill. Um, but this next topic is pretty hefty, and that's March Madness, the Final Four, and the Kansas Jayhawks. Uh, Kansas clawed its way into the Final Four this year, um, and what many say was a pretty easy road for the Hawks. Uh, we'll just say that the uh, difficulty ramps up um, now that they're in the Final Four. They're facing... A Villanova Wildcat team that they have a history with. Um, they got a bit of a score to settle. 2016 and 2018 are still pretty fresh in Jayhawk minds. There's still guys from those teams that are still on this roster that would like a victory over Jay Wright and Villanova. Um, and Villanova has been an absolute thorn in KU side in these past few meetings. Um and the J self, the the J self, the J Wright Bill Self rivalry will see yet another chapter come tomorrow at five oh nine Central Time. I did not make that time. I don't know. Gosh, what a weird time for a game. Like, who comes up with these? I mean, surely not the NCAA, the prestigious organization that it is. Oh, never. Um, I digress, though. Bill Self and the Jayhawks will have to be on their A game. Um, even though they're five-point favorites going in, um, now I know what you're thinking. Hawks' is favorites in flashes of VCU, Northern Iowa, Bucknell, and Bradley all go through your head. Well, Villanova is not going to be a team to be reckoned with. I think Bill Self is going to prep his guys um, to play a very good Villanova team, albeit shallow uh, Villanova team, especially with the loss of Justin Moore, um, I think an already shallow Villanova bench gets depleted. And the way the Hawks win this is they got to capitalize on their bench and they got to capitalize on up tempo play. Um, utilize the bench, attack up tempo, be physical, and tire this Nova team out. That is how KU will win this thing. Um, and in the end, win the whole thing. Um, I think Duke's got a really good team, and whoever comes out of that Duke-North Carolina game will give us a challenge if we make it that far. Um, but we'll just have to see. Um, that's Monday's problem. Um, we're looking at Saturday right now, and frankly, Saturday poses just as big of an issue, if not bigger. I think Villanova is the biggest challenge that they've got. Um Again, Duke's good, but they run through Paulo Ranchero. So long as they can stop them, then I think they win a national title. So long, again, as they make it past Villanova. Um, so what would a win here and on Monday mean for the Jayhawks? Um, well, if you read yesterday's article, you know my full in-depth thoughts on it. Um but in case you didn't read or can't read, which I have no idea how you got here, but hey, welcome. Glad to have you on board. Um, Bill Self and KU's legacy are very much in the balance when it comes to this title. Um, Villanova beats them, then they have a shot to surpass the Jayhawks, not only in recent title wins, but all-time title wins. Um, and title wins matter. Um, I know conference wins do too, and as do 
all-time wins. I mean, KU is the all-time winningest program now. They surpassed their tech. They surpassed Kentucky this year. Um, and frankly speaking, it does matter. But in the end, if you're not getting banners, then what do wins matter anyway for? I mean, go ask your average Dallas Cowboys fan. And they'll tell you um, banners matter. Because <laughs> they're still celebrating those from the 90s. Um, again, I'm digressing. Um, let's get back to the Hawks. Um, mind you, this is a team, Villanova, um, that is still not considered a blue blood, surprisingly. Um, so if they lose against, or excuse me, if KU loses against Villanova, what does that make them? I.e. the blue blood team in this case. Um, my personal opinion, I think Villanova should be a blue blood team. I think it's a bit of a joke that they aren't. Um, but I'm not the one. I'm not the grand poobah of blue bloods. So, frankly speaking, I couldn't tell you as to why they aren't blue bloods. But Jay Rate's a great coach. Villanova's a great program, and the Jayhawks will have a true test um, come tomorrow. Um, this could tarnish the legacy of self and the Kansas Jayhawks if they manage to choke here, though. Um, they've choked in years past. They've lost out on titles with better teams than this. Um, and I think if they do win a title here, it will redeem those years of having Joel Embiid, the Morris Twins, Andrew Wiggins, um and other Thomas Robinson, just plenty of other great KU talents that lost out on a title will be redeemed if they win this title. And I think that's what a win means here uh, for the Jayhawks. Um, but we'll just have to see. Um, frankly speaking, got to get past Saturday first. Um, Bill Self, Bill Self is a great coach. The Jayhawks still have a great chance um, and can put his te team in gear if needed. Um, I like the Hawks' odds both on Saturday and on Monday. Um, and like Jimmy Buffett once said, yes, I know I'm reiterating the article here, uh, but come a Monday, it'll be all right. Um, that being said, burn notice, 10 out of 10. Uh, hotter than the Hawk on Dollar Night in May. Um, and believe me, that place gets hot. Disgusting, even. Uh, don't go there if you're an adult. Uh, that's my advice to you for anyone visiting the Lawrence campus. Uh, shout out to the Hawk Cafe. Many a nights were had there. Um, but yeah, wouldn't go there anymore. Wouldn't enjoy myself. And frankly, if you're over the age of 21, you're not going to enjoy yourself. Moving on to the Royals, though. Um, finally, the CBA deal has been reached. And we'll be having a slightly delayed MLB season. Uh, spring training will be a bridge, but that doesn't mean it isn't all important for determining who will be on that opening day roster. Uh, one key component that's drawing a lot of eyes is Bobby Witt Jr., um, the supposed wonder kid, because Bubba Starling, I guess, wasn't. Um, but Bobby's got a lot of promise, um, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what he does. Um, but we have to make sure he's not another Bubba Starling. Um, don't get me wrong, Bubba was not bad by any stretch, um, but I see that the Royals fan base really has a tendency to overblow talent. Um, you have to remember we're a small market team. Um, we're sellers, not buyers when it comes to free agency, um, and we have to be careful engaging talent because I remember Carlos Beltran. I remember... Granted, we brought him back, but Zach Granke, um, I remember Johnny Damon, but I also remember Alex Gordon and, of course, Salvador Perez, Eric Hosmer, um, and others that were brought up through our minor league system and went on to become great Royals players. Um, so I'm not saying Bobby Witt Jr. is just going to you know, do really well for us, then dip. 
Um, but we have to remember our history and the way the MLB market works. Um, I wouldn't like to see him be picked up by, God forbid, the Yankees or the Cardinals. Um, but he's not a guaranteed stay, is basically what I'm saying. Um, that being said, we do have key free agent signings this year. Um, Royals haven't really done a whole lot in free agency um, really since 2015. Uh, they haven't made any big name splashes. Um, but I think this is the closest we've really gotten to any big name splashes since the 2015 season. Um, re-signing Granke's huge. Um, Amir Garrett did pretty well for the Reds. Um, not as well as past years compared to this past year. Um, that 6 ERA is looming large. Um, but, I mean, he was more of a closer um, and a late-inning pitcher. Um, and a pitcher that was used to stop the bleeding um, with the Reds. So... ERA, in this case, is kind of a menial stat, but also kind of not. Um, but we'll just see um, how Bobby Witt and Zach Granke and Amir Garrett all do. Um, 34 home runs and 124 RBIs for Bobby Witt is nothing to scoff at. Um but we have to be aware that the euphoria surrounding Bobby will only cause our expectations to be much more grander and much more unrealistic. Um, but moving on to returning players. Um, returning players Salvador Perez and Wet Merrifield are the two key players to watch this season. Uh, Salvador is coming off a huge year um, where he tied the league lead for home runs with 48, which um, the main question is, does Salvador have as big of a year, if not bigger, than last year, or did we see him at his prime? Um, in my opinion, Salvador cannot be our answer, but we'll need to have a big year. Um, maybe not as big as last year, but that de that really depends on how well everyone else plays. Um, Salvador cannot carry our team. Um but he will be a big part if the Royals expect to get anywhere this season. Um, same goes to Witt. Um, he, frankly, underwhelmed last season. He had his lowest average of his career uh, last year. And though much of the other stats correlated with how he normally did, I mean, yeah, he was an all-star, it felt underwhelming. Um, I think Witt was supposed to be a big leader last year and just kind of wasn't. Um, but in terms of batting average and getting on base, past years were kinder to him. Um, and obviously, again, the average, career low. Um, so he's going to have to turn it around. He's going to have to do better if he expects to be a leader on this team, which he is. He's going to have to perform better. Um, I know it's a tall ask. I know it's easier said than done. But he's going to have to be a big hit wit. And he's going to have to live up to his nickname, frankly. Um, but we'll see how he does. Um, yeah, we'll see how he does. Um, even if 2021 was somewhat disappointing... He's shown he can bounce back and be an all-star caliber player. Uh, I think his story is really the story of the Royals. Decent year, but nothing like we expected. Um, but expect a great incoming year. Um, again, we got young talent. We got veterans performing with the chip on their shoulder. And a few key free agent signings will kickstart this team into possible playoff contention. Um, speaking of free agents, a familiar face returns to the Royals lineup. Zach Granke who started his career with the Royals and spent six years with the team, will be back for 2022. Um, Granke's addition adds a lot to what was a fairly measly bullpen last year. Um, top it off with Amir Garrett, and the bullpen is making strides in terms of potential. 
Uh, Granke was named opening day starter this week and will more than likely be the Royals' marquee starter this season. Um, I don't see anyone else really doing that. Uh, Carlos Hernandez looks promising um, as another key starter, and Brad Keller does as well. Um, but, I mean, Zach Granke is Zach Granke. He's a veteran talent, and he's a proven talent. Um, and I think you see a lot of inconsistency with those other two guys that I mentioned, um, along with the rest of the Barroas bullpen. And I think Zach Greinke will help fix that inconsistency and bring that veteran leadership to a fairly young bullpen. Um, as for Amir Garrett, the lefty was used more of as a relief closer, like I said, um, with the Reds in 2021, recording seven game, excuse me, seven saves. In uh, 63 games pitched, his ERA was a bit glaring, as I said as well. Um, 6.04 is not exactly a step up from what the Royals had last year. However, in years past, he's recorded ERAs below 3 in 2020 and 2019. So he has the ability to be good. Um, 2021 may be a step back for Garrett, um, but 2022 will hopefully be a step forward. Um, he's not going to be our ace by any stretch of the imagination. I still see him in a relieving role with us. Um, maybe as a compliment to Josh Stomont, who is our key closer right now. Um, but we'll see. I mean, again, the saves numbers are speak for themselves. I mean, he's got good saves. Um, but that ERA leaves something to be desired. Um, pitching will be a, the big thing to watch for this Rose team. And if pitching can be serviceable, at least, I think the Royals do have a chance at getting a wild card spot. Um, but how big of a chance remains to be seen. Um, overall team predictions for the Royals, I believe, range from mediocre to heavy playoff contender, and it all weighs on what I listed previously. Uh, veterans need to perform, rookies need to live up to the hype, and pitching at least needs to be serviceable. Um, pitching last year was abysmal, which is why we broke even, um, even with Salvador having a huge year and even with our bats not being not being that bad. I mean, above average, really. Um, and really, pitching's been a long-standing problem for the Royals since twenty again since that twenty fifteen season. Um, and I think if we can figure it out and pull pitchers from that minor league system, the Royals could be great, and the Royals could be an excellent small market team. Um, we'll see what Brady Singer and Harlo Carlos Hernandez can bring to the table. Uh, but if they don't show up, there really needs to be a change in our farm team staffing and scouting, um, I think. Um, and I think Dayton Moore knows that as well. But burn notice, 8 out of 10. Looking forward to some hot summer nights at the K, so long as we still have the K and it doesn't move downtown. Um... Not saying that I don't want a downtown stadium, but the K is the K, man. I mean, we grew up where it, we grew up with it. There's some nostalgia to it, and frankly speaking, I don't want to see it go. Um, and if there is going to be a downtown stadium, make it like the K. Bring the scoreboard. Um, bring the fountains. Just don't solely tradition, frankly. Um, which actually brings me to my next point. Talking about the Chiefs now. Um, and what better way to get into this week's hot debate about the Chiefs moving to Kansas. Um, boy, howdy, folks. This caught Chiefs Twitter by storm. Um, even though the possibility of it even happening doesn't happen until 2031 when the lease is up. So uh, we'll see. I mean, obviously, there's going to be work done before that. Um, if the Chiefs do move, but again, lease isn't up till 2031, um, on Arrowhead. I'm sorry, Geehaw Field 
at Arrowhead Stadium. Got to make sure to get that brand in there. Um, Mark, Mark Donovan proposed that he was open to the idea of the Chiefs making the move out to Johnson County area if KCMO cannot come up with public funds um, to keep the Chiefs on the Missouri side. Now, obviously, with how reactionary the fan base is, um, it sent many fans over the edge. And they took twit. Uh, they took the Twitter to unleash hell um, onto the apathetic and uncaring masses of one person's opinion on Twitter. Um, I'm sure Jim Bob, with all eight of his followers, really made an impact on Mark Donovan's opinion um, to relocate the team. But I'll give my take on the situation. And yeah, I know I have like eight followers too as well. Um, relax. Okay. But speaking of relaxing, relax. The Chiefs are not moving to Timbuktu. Um, they're not moving to Lawrence or Salina or Wichita. Uh, they're moving across the border to Johnson County. Um, to Overland Park, to KCK, to to Shawnee, like w- one of those cities will more than likely get the Chiefs if they do decide to move to Kansas. They're not moving across the state. Um, and they'll still be known as the Kansas City Chiefs because, frankly speaking, those areas are part of the Kansas City metro. Um, and I get it, border war, what have you. Oh, I don't want to go to Kansas. You already drive up to Independence to go to the game anyway and sit through an hour of I-70 traffic. So frankly speaking, even if they do move, and I'm not saying I condone the move, if they do, you can deal with it. Rest your easy little head. The Joko Elite won a stadium closer to them in an area that is very quickly growing, and Joko dollars, frankly, spend harder than Independence and KC Mo dollars. Um, and that's just a fact. Again, it's a growing area with a lot of rich, rich, businessmen that will hold the will hold Kansas City and the Chiefs hostage if they have to and unleash a bidding war. And if that's what it comes down to, Joko will more than likely win. Um, however, money is not the only thing Mark Donovan will consider. And um, Frankly speaking, I don't think they should move. I think, if anything, they should renovate Arrowhead. Um, if they want to make changes and re-up that lease, um, find more private investors if you have to. Um, if Kansas City's not going to give you the funds, then yeah, find more private investors. Um, but frankly speaking, you move to Joko, you risk that loss of tradition, working class appeal, and frankly tarnish the reputation of Chiefs Kingdom. I mean, Arrowhead is the loudest stadium in the world, and if Arrowhead goes kaput, that doesn't exist anymore. The record does, but not the stadium, and frankly speaking, I think the stadium matters more. Um, And it's Lamar Hunt's baby. I mean, Arrowhead has been there since the 70s, and has been a mainstay of Kansas City culture. Um, And, I mean, moving it would cause a rift, I would say, and may cause fan base apathy even. Uh, It may cause fan base loss. Uh, I think it's silly. I agree. It's silly that... The fan base is that reactionary, but yeah, some people are, in fact, that reactionary. And when you think about the border war, (laughs) Missouri and Kansas don't like each other. And I know Kansas people are saying, well, I travel to Missouri. Again, it's it's the principle of it. Um, I find it just as ridiculous as you do. But frankly speaking, I think moving Arrowhead would be a bad move. Um, But it's a hard decision. It's one that won't be made for some time, though. So burn notice 6 out of 10. Embers, but 
really no fire yet. Um, but let's get into free agency in the draft, though, uh, for the Chiefs. Uh, trying to steer away from a uh, less but still reactionary and more urgent topic um, for Chiefs Kingdom. Uh, Chiefs still need an edge rusher. Um, they got the wide receiver talent in Smith Schuster and Valdez Scantling. Gosh, imagine if those two started a law firm or their sisters got married and decided to hyphenate two sheesh. Um, anyway, they could still use maybe one more talent to top um, to top off Mahomes' arsenal. And however, I think the focus on free agency in the draft should be to pick up defensive assets. Um, and yeah, I use that in a gen in a general sense because holy crap, we need a defense. Um, Frank Clark, Nick Bolton, Chris Jones, if he stays, and Willie Gay are all well and good, but goodness, we need more. Like we need more, and that, frankly speaking, that secondary is going to get toasted like Philip Gaines or worse than Philip Gaines really ever did. Um, shout out to Philip Gaines. Hope you're well, buddy. Uh, my advice for the Chiefs in the upcoming draft is to find edge talent early and to hit heavy um, on the secondary in those early to mid rounds. You can check out my mock draft if you want to see, if I were a GM, how I'd draft. Um, definitely pick up some mid-round gems, though, at wide receiver. Find a Travis Kelsey underling. He's getting old, face it. We got to nip this in the butt now before we're scrambling to find a free agent tight end, which honestly is easier said than done. Um, and maybe some picks to bolster the old line. Um, my only exception for those early round picks not being spent on defense is if we can find Jamison Wilson, Chris Olave, or George Pickens at wide receiver and they're not taken. Um, Sky Moore maybe is a possible Tyree Kill clone, but it's not necessary, frankly. Um, the team molds around Patrick Mahomes from here on out. He's the one that signed a 10-year contract. He's the one that we're centering our team around. Uh, the Patriots did it with Brady, and if we expect to win four, five, six Super Bowls, then we center this team around Mahomes and his needs. Um, I know that some of you don't like to hear that, but the NBA, or excuse me, the NFL is not the NBA, frankly. Um, and I'm truly tired of people saying that we need a super team in order to win Super Bowls. We don't. We need a serviceable team. We need a good team around a couple of really big name talents. Um, we saw how a super team tried to pan out last year and we lost in the AFC championship. Um, we had a weak defense and we choked. Um, and frankly speaking, I think Brett Veach is not going to let that happen again. He's going to execute some Veach black magic and get the guys that he wants and needs and that Mahomes wants and needs and that Andy Reed wants and needs. Um, and that loss stings, and I think we have figured out that we need to re-up and re-arm. Um, burn notice, 10 out of 10. Jamal, Jamal Charles is cleats after scoring a touchdown. I mean, it's a big topic. It's a hot topic. I understand why it's a hot topic. But we have to understand that, hey, we got to center this team around my homes now. Um... And Brett Beach is a great GM. He's going to figure it out. Um, the reactions I see all over Twitter and everything like that, again, are reactionary. Um, when a, when the Tyreek Hill trade happened, a lot of people, a lot of people's first reaction, including mine, was, yeah, no. Why did we trade away our best receiver? That's such a dumb move especially after we traded away our best corner too and our best arguably our best defensive player is still on the trade block and on the free agent market um 
but it's a move that I think helps the Chiefs in the long run, and that will win us five to six more Super Bowls. Maybe not next year, per se, but we still have a chance next year, and a pretty good one at that. And I think it's a bit silly that people's title hopes have been hinged on been hinged on Tyreek Hill and Tyron Matthew. Um, we'll be fine. But concluding the program, congratulations to Ben McCollum and the Northwest Missouri State basketball team uh, winning their fourth NCAA Division II basketball championship and their third straight title. Um, you have to wonder at any point, is it going to be considered to uh, move up to Division I? both football and basketball actually have an article on that uh go check it out on the burn kc sports talk the burn kc sports talk.com um go check it out uh this podcast will be posted there uh, as well as to youtube and um will be posted to the facebook page um and give me a follow on twitter at the burn kc or excuse me the burn underscore kc um facebook the burn kc if you're here you already know where it is um in on instagram the burn underscore or or excuse me the underscore burn underscore kc there's a lot of underscores my apologies um daily articles funny stuff and general sports banter from your favorite freelance kc sports talk host uh want to schedule an interview please don't hesitate to reach out um the burn sports talk kc at gmail.com um shout out to the kansas city blues uh my rugby team planning on getting some more rugby content posted um here in the near future um i'd love to interview one of you as well as uh the kansas jayhawks rugby football club i'd love to interview anybody from there and get some stories going um so don't hesitate to reach out again i'm alex blackburn host of the burn kansas city sports talk Uh, Thank you for tuning in and listening, and I hope to catch you next week, same time, same place. Don't forget to hashtag burn it down, and have a great night.